Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Ben Paul, President and CEO of After School All Stars. Ben has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us, and I'd like to thank you, Ben, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. After School All Stars is a very interesting organization with a very interesting history that offers children very important programs at an interesting point in their day. Describe what After School All Stars does for children. After School All Stars provides free, comprehensive after school programs to over 70,000 students living in circumstances of poverty all across the country in 350 schools in 50 cities from New York to Honolulu, Hawaii. Our mission is to keep kids safe and help kids succeed in school and in life. So let me just break that down real quick. Uh, why keep kids safe? We know that schools end at 3 o'clock. Mom and dad are generally not home at 3 o'clock. Neither are most caregivers because they're working. Um, at the same time, from 3 to 6, uh, those are deemed the danger zone hours by law enforcement, meaning that is the peak time for juvenile crime to occur. As a matter of fact, crime triples at 3 p.m. Um, so we need to make sure that kids aren't out on the street unsupervised. So first and foremost, let's keep the kids safe, keep them at school until 6 o'clock until a caring adult can come pick them up. The second two elements of our mission, help kids succeed in school, help them succeed in life. So let me just break those two down. Help them succeed in school. A lot of academic success comes from simply being able to do your homework, getting help early when you need it, getting help on core subject matters like reading and math and writing. So what we do is we spend an hour with kids every day helping them with their schoolwork. As a matter of fact, they did a study on after-school All-Stars programs and they found that kids who participated in after-school All-Stars versus kids who did not participate in after-school All-Stars but were in the same schools. Uh, the kids who participated in our program had the equivalent of an additional month of schoolwork. That's how much their academic gains were. And then finally we say help kids succeed in life. Now that's a very broad term, but let me give you a very short story uh, that hopefully demonstrate what that looks like from our perspective. There's a girl named Yvonne who joined our program when she was in sixth grade. She recently came and spoke to our board about her experience at After School All Stars. She said, I was always smart, but I never had any confidence. Well, she joined us, learned guitar, and sure enough, had to go on stage, the most terrifying thing she ever did in her life, but she performed and she did great. And that was just the first moment in her life where she discovered that she can be brave and that she can have confidence and that she can do things. Well, guess what? Fast forward from sixth grade to last year, Yvonne was speaking to our national board of directors, telling them how proud she is of her accomplishments and how she was able to go where she went thanks to the confidence she found in our program. Well, where she went was Yale University. She was uh, about to graduate last year when she was talking to our board and is planning to come back to LA to work in education. After School All Stars is a very unique organization. It's mm -hmm. distinguished by history and by the approaches that it takes to marketing itself, to uh, convincing uh, schools, particularly in the early days, to, to try this approach, and then to your evolution. Talk about how you were founded and how the founding informs your work today. After School All Stars was founded in a very organic way. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who founded the organization, always told me that he was inspired by Eunice Shriver, who started the Special Olympics, and Sergeant Shriver, who founded the Peace Corps, to do something to make the world a better place and to help students in need. Uh, he was passionate about sports. As a matter of fact, President Bush, the first Bush, asked him to be the president's chairman on the Council on Physical Fitness. And in taking on that role, he traveled the country and visited all 50 states and passed on the message of health and fitness to America's youth. When he finished that service, he found one particular program in Los Angeles that inspired him called Inner City Games. And Inner City Games was doing the same work of providing sports for inner city kids. And Arnold had this idea, along with the founder of Inner City Games, Danny Hernandez, to take that program all across the country. Around 2003, the National Board, Arnold, and the other stakeholders in the organization took an internal look and said, we are doing tremendous work with kids. We're helping them be fit. We're helping them stay active. 
However, we've created this incredible national infrastructure and we're missing a lot of other pieces of what children are telling us they need. We're not helping them with their homeworks, with their academics, with engaging in their community, with enrichment programs that the schools are pulling out. So in this reflective moment, the organization said, you know what, we need to do more. What we're doing is great, kids need more. So we decided to expand our mission from just sports to what we call comprehensive after school, which is sports, but it's also academics and it's also enrichment programs. One of the things that I think is interesting is, is the philosophy behind After School All-Stars. This is not a top-down program in which children are told that they have certain needs. They actually can connect with programs that are available and start to think about their own role in reaching for their future. It's a fundamental piece of a child's education to have enrichment programming. And as a matter of fact, it's usually the most engaging part of a student's day. So they're looking forward to the music class. They're looking forward to playing in the yard. They're looking forward to doing cheerleading or whatever it is in their day that gets them excited and engaged. And that has an uplifting effect on their entire day. That actually helps their academics because they're more present and they're more engaged and they're more motivated. So we see it as a fundamental right for students to have enrichment programs as part of their educational experience. And parents expect it. The challenge is, and we all know it, it comes back to funding. You know, the school days are really struggling with funding just the basics often. You know, some schools still manage to figure out how to fund uh, enrichment programs, but most don't. So that's where we come in. And we see us a fundamental part of the school day. That's why all of our programs are actually based in schools. We don't have another building that we open at 3 o'clock when we lock up the school building. We keep the schools open till 6, and from 3 to 6, we educate the whole child on top and above, uh, in addition to what the school day has been able to provide. The other thing that I think is an interesting feature is the combination of, of play or fun or entertainment with discipline. Mm -hmm. After School mm -hmm. All-Stars seems to embed within so many of its programs things like time management, things like the, in the story that you, that you told uh, of Yvonne where she was working toward an actual performance, the consciousness of, of how to achieve a result, how to achieve an outcome, and the discipline for that, whether it's a physical discipline or an intellectual discipline or playing an instrument, After School All-Stars seems to always include that element in its programming. It's a very important fact that you learn in, in a variety of ways. And different students learn and engage on different issues. And some learn um, by reading, some learn by doing, some are more experiential learners and some are more academic uh, learners. And so what we try to do is we try to infuse a lot of different learning opportunities that will address all kinds of uh, learning types, um, but also enrich the educational experience in such a way that kids can have things that are also disguised learning. So you're actually having fun building a robot, but at the same time you're maybe learning coding skills or computer programming skills. And so the students are actually learning um, but are having fun at the same time. And entertaining I think education. Entertaining education. There's a, that's a great term for it. Um, the kids know they're enjoying themselves and I think one of the exciting things about after school is that we actually don't have a lot of limitations on curriculum. So whereas the school day often has a lot of restrictions on how to teach and what to teach, um, the after school time is sort of like the wild west from that regard. So you know, if the kids want to take a field trip, we can go on a field trip. If the kids want to learn how to build a robot, we can get on the floor and build a robot. We can teach them how to code. We can do anything that they really want to do that's exciting and engaging for them and that has some academic merit. Um, a big part of our program is service learning. Um, we believe that every program at After School All-Stars should have a service component to it. And that giving is not just giving to the kids that we serve, but the giving is also by the kids we serve. So the student who participate in After School All-Stars don't see themselves as recipients of charity. They see the burden on themselves to help people that have it more difficult than they do.
In terms of your, your total budget, what is your total annual spending? We spend roughly $35 million uh, right now. Every year since I joined the organization, the budget has grown, and I expect it will continue to grow. Um, some of our chapters um, are organized as their own 501c3, and some are under one national 501c3, but when you pull them all together, it's roughly $35 million. The important thing is that we continue to bring in partners, and raising money when you're so passionate about the mission is not as hard um, because we are all so interested in bringing as many partners, and we think of our funders as partners, into the organization because uh, we can't do it alone. And so while we hope that we continue to serve as many kids, we also think about the broader need. And while we serve 70,000 students, which sounds a lot to me, we know that there's nearly 15 million students who still don't have access to after-school programs. So if you serve over 70,000 students and your budget is about 35 million, your actual annual spend per student is $466 per student. Is that the entire value that that student uh, receives? I'm so glad you asked that because so many more resources are harnessed in service of our students than just the dollars that hit our budget. As a matter of fact, the school facilities are often donated. The teachers um, are often um, paid for by the school in some instances if they have a grant and then they are contributing that to the program. We get partners and volunteers to come in and provide in-kind services. So when we invest a dollar, we can often double or triple it. That's part of the reason why I call after school the Wild West. There's so much energy happening and so many people who want to help. Because one of the challenging things is you open the paper and you read that we're 35th in the, in the world in reading and we're 42nd in math and you just ask yourself, what am I going to do to make this better? And I think individuals don't feel empowered to make a difference and they look at these problems and they're just overwhelmed by them. And then here we come in after school and we say, come on guys, let's do this thing. Let's help, let's be part of the solution. What's next for After School All Stars? I think for us it's always going to be about program quality. So we want to make sure that we always put our students as our number one goal. And so right now we're in the process of launching, bear with me with this acronym, YPQA. YPQA, okay. Which is a tongue twister. Okay. But it stands for the Youth Program Quality Assessment. It's uh -huh. a group out of Michigan that created an incredible program to gauge program quality. And if you bear with me for two minutes, I'll explain how it works. I'm really excited about this thing. So imagine a pyramid. And at the base of the pyramid, you talk about student safety. So these are the building blocks of a high quality program. So what does student safety look like? Do the kids feel safe, physically safe? You know, someone gonna pull out a knife, right? So you wanna keep the program safe, both physically and emotionally, right? No bullying. So if you can create a program that's safe, you've created the platform or the base or the foundation. Then you say, okay, well, what can we do more than that? And say, can you create a um, supportive environment for students? So what's the supportive environment look like? When I come in, is my instructor excited to see me? Do I get a warm welcome? Does everyone know my name? Do they know who I am? Do I feel like I'm amongst friends? And you create a supportive environment. Now kids are leaning forward and they want to learn. Now they're excited. So if you master creating a supportive environment, you move up this pyramid, and then you want to create an interactive environment. What does that look like? That's when kids actually are not passive participants in a program but they're actually interacting with the program where they can say, hey, I don't want to learn guitar. I want to learn music. Oh, I don't want music. Contributing their energy, their they sensibility. Are, exactly. They are now building the program with us. And guess what? They're even more engaged. And, and they're then, learning self-reliance, and they're learning, they're learning all these skills that are so important for people to be independent in their lives. They learn that their voices matter, that their opinion matters, and that they have choices and that they can make positive choices and they can make non-positive choices. And the most exciting part of this quality program, the YPQA program, is the top of the pyramid is, is your program engaging? And what does that mean? Well, for us, I'll give you an example. Let's say we're going on a field trip to a museum. Well, you can just get on the bus, go to the museum, come back, and you're done. Right. But in an engaging program, you'll spend the day before you go studying about where you're going to. What's the exhibits that are now on display? 
Who built the museum? What's the role of the museum in the community? Then you'll go on the field trip, and guess what? When you come back the following day, you'll talk about what did we learn? Why was that interested? Why did it matter? And so now you've taken a field trip from just a field trip into a very engaging um, experience that had a lot more learning associated with it. So these four building blocks create this program quality system. We piloted it last year in two cities and seven schools. This year we're rolling it out to 10 cities and 70 schools. And my hope in the next couple of years is to roll it out into every school we're in because we're going to continue to make quality the number one priority of this organization. In the process, transforming the lives of children, families, and communities. Ben Paul, thank you so much for sharing the great work of After School All-Stars and your vision for the future. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.